What is up everybody? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to George Reviews. Today on George Reviews, we'll be taking a look at DC Multiverse Kryptonite Doomsday from the Superman Batman series. But before I get started, I always got to tell you about my love-hate relationship with McFarlane. I figured it out. McFarlane is the evil toy genius. He knows what it takes to make a figure, make it rare. He'll, he'll release, release them in limited quantities. But what he does really... He'll, you'll think he made the wrong figure, like like a guy have the wrong gloves, the wrong boots. But what it is, he's slowly bringing out tooling till he gets to the completed figure that he knows we're gonna buy. So he'll sell like like for instance, we got the devastated version of Doomsday, and there were some pieces that went to the next version of Doomsday that came in the Superman Doomsday 2-pack. And then they took a lot of that that figure, and now he's here as this figure. And I think he's going to evolve into the perfect Doomsday, sort of like what he really did in the comics or whatever. But now the 2-pack, I was very interested in. It was a Target exclusive. It looked a lot like the classic Doomsday that kills Superman. And I tried to be clever and wait for it to go on clearance. And the damn thing didn't go on clearance. It sold out and it was gone. And then uh, now it goes for over 100 bucks. They're selling that Doomsday loose for 100 bucks after everybody complained about it. Everybody complained like the head wasn't right. They reused too many parts from the previous version. So with this third version, this was not my cup of tea. But it's a mega figure. I like Doomsday and I just didn't want to pass up another version. But I'll get more into that when we get into the toy. This is the standard packaging for most McFarlane figures. You basically get the window box. You get a little bit of artwork in the background. You can see the card, the stand, the figure fully within. So if you wanted to display it in the packaging just like this on your shelf, you can. And it would be awesome. Even if you take the figure out, you can put it back in and still display it like that. So very simple but very functional packaging. Side of the box, more of the same. We got a QR code down here. We might have to explore that in this review. Show you, you know, you get on your phone. They're advertising the iPhone right there a little bit. Um, the back of the box, we have some very cool artwork of the kryptonite spikes and doomsday hand. He has Batman Kyle and Superman's cape. I guess Batman's cape as well. Another QR code right there. Kryptonite doomsday inside the box. Again, very standard stuff. I got it at GameStop. I use my $5 off of the $37 bucks and my $1 membership thing. So he came out to be like $35 bucks from GameStop. So I'm going to get doomsday open and we are going to take a look together. Here is Doomsday. Sculpt is nice. He feels lighter than you would think just by looking at it. So I'm going to get him stand up and finish this unboxing. The inner insert, which is cool. Simple but cool. Contains the car and the stand as usual. One card with a little bit of a bio. See if I can get the light adjusted so you can pause and read and check that out. And one action figure stand. Same basic stand. Sometimes a little DC varies on it, uh, depending on if it's exclusive or not, but same basic stand. And this concludes the unboxing portion of the video. All right, fam, we are back on George Reviews. And I say we are back because I started this video Memorial Day weekend, believe it or not. I didn't like the lighting in the background. And then by the time I changed everything around to reshoot the video, I got in some other things and I stopped shooting the video. But here we are two months later trying to finish up this video. And let's take a look at our figure and we're going to bring him closer. And as always on this channel, we take a look at the head scope first. And it is a very nice head scope. I would expect nothing less from McFarlane Toys. He has like a tattoo or something on his forehead. It looks to be the Superman shield surrounded by a couple other little markings forming almost like a triangle on his forehead. And then he is bald. We have a bald doomsday, no ponytail or anything like that. He has the predator braids going around the sides of his head. Even has the tassels. I mean, this is straight ripped from the predator or the predator ripped it from this guy. Taking a look at his face and concentrating there. Uh... After the tattoo, we have some bone protrusions for his eyebrows. Then we have the green glowing eyes. 
and the green teeth and bone spikes jutting from his chin. Unlike the spikes on his shoulders and forearms, this is molded into the scope of the head and not a separate piece. And it is a, a hard, spiky plastic. Again, not like the shoulders and forearms. We'll get to that. And then the mouth itself opens up for us. Looks pretty cool. You can see a little tongue in there. That is very nice. Coming to Doomsday Shoulders, we have the bone protrusions, which are supposed to be made out of kryptonite. And it is a softer, gummier plastic in a separate piece. If you work really hard, you can pull these out of here if you wanted to. Nice Everything else on the neck down appears to be a reuse of the previous Doomsday. I never had it in hand, only saw it online. But I believe this is the same mold. He has a dry brushing across his chest and arms on the front of the figure. Spikes on the shoulders right here. But on the back of the figure, there is nothing. There's literally like a drop spilled and fell like right here and right here on his back. But no paint work on his back, just the front. McFarlane, you cheap bastard. And the main bone protrusion from the middle of his chest is a softer plastic and a separate piece stuck in there. And it hardly has any paint on it, if any at all. Like right here, the ab section has more paint than this. And I'm just used to this being like more white, more bony painted. Then I'm disappointed in the hands at the fingernails for not having any white on that to bring out the sculpt a little bit more. So that's coming down to his waist. He's wearing the belt from the bio suit and the ripped pants or what's left of the shirt or top torso part. Credit where credit is due. I love the molded in detail of the fabric on the shorts and the little belts that used to contain the suit, but he perfectly broke out of it as shorts and boots. <laughs> and the, the shorts or trunks on this guy is a nice soft plastic. It should allow for good articulation later on. Shorts at the thigh are molded into the leg sculpt. It's not a separate piece. This is the joint underneath. Bone protrusions down here, glow in the dark protrusions are soft gummy plastic. They are different. They're not the same bone protrusions on opposite legs. And then we come to the boots. A little bit of torn and tattered and stuffed underneath there. Nice boots where they get his size at. I don't know. But um, overall, he looks pretty good. I am never disappointed in a McFarlane scope. It just comes down to a matter on these mega figures. Will or won't the articulation be there? So he surprised me sometimes, but oftentimes I'm left wanting for more articulation. All right, and now for the articulation, we'll start with the head, as usual. And the head does not go up at all. I mean, I would say somewhat, depending on how you position it, but not at all. The head goes down this much. You can get some side to side out of it, and far as 360 in the head, I mean, you're, you're going to have to struggle around the spikes and then the dreads on his head. Coming to his shoulders, we can get his shoulders up about this far, which is nothing. Now, I mean, I, and you could chalk that up to where the bone protrusions from the arms hit the bone protrusion on the shoulders, and that may be the reason. But I think they should have sacrificed some of these spikes so we can get a little bit more articulation. Next up is our shoulder and arm articulation and sort of like a butterfly joint here, but not quite. It doesn't really butterfly. It doesn't give him any articulation across his chest. This is all you get. His arms just basically come straight forward and it covers the joint when you spread the arms out like this. He has an elbow swivel thing, not quite a bicep swivel. I guess it's sort of both all in one with a 360 if you wanted it to. And then he has an elbow bend and I can tell you right now. Not much out of that elbow band right there, but I guess it is enough. Coming down to his wrist, he has an up and down hinge on his wrist for whatever that's worth. On this guy, he doesn't carry a weapon or anything like that, and I can barely get it to move. Coming over to his arm, and get his articulate up and down some for what that's worth. And at 360, both hands 360 at the wrist. Coming to that midsection right here, he can rear back this much, and then you see the gap. And he can rock side to side at that joint all around. Same thing with the waist. The waist is pretty much the exact same articulation, just lower side to side. It's a little bit loose. 360 out of that. And then they'll, they'll both 360 that 316 separately, and I don't want them to. So it's, it's a little loose in the chest area and the waist. Coming down to his legs, it should be good because of the trunks. He can get the splits. This much front to back. Probably get a little bit more if I stretch it. No true thigh swivel. Able to speak of, it moves a little bit because of the joint. And coming down to his knee, he swivels at the knee. It'll go for a 360 if you wanted it to. No, 
No living creature swivels at the knee. It's a single joint bend, which uh, kind of sucks. Kind of want more out of that, but I guess the scope wouldn't allow it in the back anyway. It, it just should have been sculpted better to articulate. And coming down to the ankle, we get some down, some up, and some side to side out of that. And again, very limited articulation on McFarlane's mega figures. Now, our Doomsday doesn't come with any real accessories, save for the stand in the card. But um, he does come with a feature. And it's a glow-in-the-dark feature. And if you're like me, I love glow-in-the-dark features. I, I think the green protrusions are kind of weird, even though it was like some cannon stuff. But um, it makes it worth it for the glow-in-the-dark feature. It's not the greatest glow-in-the-dark toy. And to get it recorded, I'm going to have to use my black light. But um, let's check it out real quick. Right, I mean, he looks cool. I mean, if I could record it straight up glowing in the dark, you would see how good it is. But I don't think it really compares to some of my other glow in the dark figures that I'll bring out in a second. But I, I've seen the glow in the dark thing done better, but this isn't bad. All right, we reached the time in the review where we give our action figure the size up and the rundown. All right, our Superman, Batman, Kryptonite Doomsday stands at about 9 inches or 23 centimeters. Here is next to fellow DC McFarlane mega figures Calabac and Clayface. Continuing the parade of DC multiverse figures, here are Necron and Man Bat. Right, you know I had to get Superman out here. This represents my main Superman in my DC shelf. And not a mega figure, but a builder figure, Red Lantern Atrocitus. From Transformers Studio Series, here is Dinobot Snarl. And from the world of SH Figure Arts and their version of a mega figure, here is Ozaro Form Prince Vegeta. In toy lines again but trying to stay big from super seven here's thundercats mum ra and from gi joe classified i think this is the biggest gi joe classified figure they made to date here's cobra emperor serpentor representing marvel legends is the red hulk and from star wars the black series darth vader while i got the camera cooperating on the glow in the dark feature from master of the universe classics is the legendary scare glow figure and from super seven thundercats ultimates is mummy form mum ra all right, now I'm going to wrap it up and give you my final thoughts on Superman, Batman, Kryptonite, Doomsday version of Doomsday. This is the third release of a Doomsday figure. None of these releases have been 100% accurate. And I know some toys aren't 100% accurate, but they're missing a lot of stuff. Like I noticed earlier in the review, I noticed they didn't paint the bone spikes in the middle of the chest. Then I realized that this version of Doomsday doesn't have bone spikes in the middle of the chest. He has normal humanoid pecs without the spikes. And so they just didn't paint it to kind of give you that look. And speaking of paint, the wash could have been a little bit better and over the figure a little bit more to bring out some of the sculpt and i think you can say that about a lot of mcfarland figures so um, i mean it wasn't a really big complaint of mine but it's one of my complaints and the biggest complaint are the joints the lack of articulation in the joints we could have used a double hinged elbow double hinged knees to get them in some of those poses for battle with superman and batman i guess in this case I tried posing this guy around, had the right arm fall off on me a couple times, and out of the box, the left ankle was really loose, and then the torso section is loose. I think that's due to the weight, because the arms are solid and it pulls on it, but the, uh, the torso section and the waist section could have been a little bit tighter for my taste. Love the fact that we get the articulated jaw. The glow-in-the-dark feature is very, very cool. I'm happy to get a Doomsday, but I still regret not getting that Superman Doomsday 2-pack. That's more to my liking. But I think he's going to revisit this figure several times more because, I mean, this guy, he will take a figure and reissue it. I think like some of the Batmans are on like the fifth, maybe sixth reissue of a couple of those Batman figures. So he, he gets his mileage out of his molds for his toy line. But as far as, as playability... Um, and posing around, I got to give it a, like a 5.5. It could be a lot better. And now, do I recommend it? If you really love Doomsday, yes. You're collecting these mega figures, yes. Um, do I think we're going to get a better Doomsday down the road? Yes. But yeah, straight up, just to recommend it at the $40 price point, I do not, far as a reviewer. 
I'm going to stop right there because that's all I got. I want to thank you all for watching another episode of George Reviews. My unofficial return to doing reviews. The reviews where every toy has a story.